Do okay. Dr. Muhammad, how they how they look? It look okay? It looks all right. I'm coordinated. <laughs> you know, I, I I didn't really want to talk too much because people they, they they get they get mad at me because I be uh, behind the camera running my mouth. They don't want they want to see you talk about hip hop and and pop culture and black culture. Wow. You know, well, I have a lot to say about that. Go uh, right ahead. My daughter just been telling me about well, where can she go? She's asking me questions like I got an answer. And I'm not sure what to tell her because she's, she said, I got to stop listening to all this hip hop. I was like, really? She said, they're talking about everybody but me. The rappers claim that they want a red bone. They claim that they want, they don't want the black butt. And she says they're very disrespectful. She's feeling disrespected and ignored. That's your, a black, young your daughter black woman. is how old now? She's a she made it to teenage, so it's the hard part. Well, that, my children are small. They did not watch BET. You know that. I ain't let them. There I, was no BET. Well, no. When my kids, I mean, when my for, kids there, are small. There's no BET for June either. She does. It's all about her tablet. But you, you an expert. You an expert on hip hop. Hip hop is changing, and it's disgusting me too. So, hip hop for the flow for the actual lyrics, for the thinking that's supposed to happen, that's not really hitting that much so without you, disrespecting young black women. You're talking about the old hip hop was cool. I'm talking about all of it. What about the old hip hop back the in the day? The old hip hop back in the day, I'm talking 30 years ago. Yeah. It was all right. What about 20 years ago? Was it? Slightly, I loved Tupac. Yeah. I loved um, some of what Common had started doing. Every once in a while, it was become, 20 years ago it became commercialized. Do they still call it hip hop? They call it crunk or something. I don't I'm not hip. It's lots I'm not, of I'm, ranges. I'm, I'm square, you know. I it's don't know. It's lots that. of subgenres. So right now it's still hip hop. That's yeah. the claim that because of the business. So who's the big star? Because I I I I met a little Wayne years ago when he became a big when he wasn't a nobody basically he was up and coming. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who he was. They said Dwayne Carter. I said I don't know who Dwayne Carter is. That's Little Wayne. I'm not hip. So you gotta hit me to this hip hop because I don't listen to it. I, I, I sort of like it, but if I was, but my children are 18 and 20 now, but they were little, they can't listen to that garbage. That's what I told her. I told her listen to the music from maybe 10 years ago and be very selective. And so she's asking me, well, what about this? And I was like, well, that's probably not making you feel good, is it? She's like, no. I don't know what to listen to. I don't know what I'm going to find. And even this past weekend, the day of her birthday, she was downtown with her father, and she noticed a Chicago rapper. And she said something about it. And her father, of course, said, what What you mean? I'm not handsome enough to look at and keep... She's like, well, he just happens to be a rapper that's on a lot of YouTube and websites for hip-hop music the claim, people who claim hip hop music. And she said, I really don't, I like him. He says nigga every verse, but not every line, like some other rappers do. Uh, so she's still looking to it. So last night even she asked me, well, where can I go? Where can I live when I grow up? I said, well, maybe Belize or maybe Germany. So America is, is, is you, you had enough with the United States? Yeah. Fatima. Yes. <laughs> Even my daughter doesn't feel comfortable anymore. She's like, I don't belong anywhere. Because all the internet is the thing. That's the TV used to be the big media influence. Now the tablets and the internet and everybody got something to say over the internet. So it's too many voices. Well, I don't want to say too many. It's so many voices that she can get caught up and wind up, which this is what she's told me. I wind up repeating and knowing these songs and when I think about it and listen to them, every other word is a B word or a H word or N word and even more disgusting. Yeah, but what about, what about the, when I, when I, the few times I listen to WGCI Power 92, all I hear is men. Where are the female entertainers and singers and rappers or whatnot? What? We're looking for them. It's all, it, everything is all male, it's all misogynistic. Yep. What is that all about? It's about what they believe is the money. And by they, I mean the three or four corporations that distribute music and promote concerts and sell 
iTunes and downloads. It's about what those few entities want to sell and what they believe will make the most money. And it's like big media and little bitty audience. Even though the audience claims to be involved with all their comments and discussions and their top ten this because they have a tablet or a smartphone. I know Pharrell had a big hit record. He, he was happy, he had a big hit record. He's a 40-year-old. Pharrell's yes. in his 40s. But is there a 20-year-old young man, a young lady, African-American, black, whatever term we want to use these days, are putting out some wholesome songs that you can play to your children where the whole family can listen to? No. I'm going to say no. There are... My daughter, and she's looking, and she's constantly searching, can't even find something that she feels is wholesome and she's audience as a rap or hip-hop music appreciator she's like I gotta stop listening to this. she thought she liked Chance the Rapper because he's from Chicago and she's looking for a way to get anchored and feel included and she's like I can't like him anymore either because every other word is n-word b-word and I don't feel good about myself listening to them. You're a wonderful parent, Fatima, but a lot of uh, a lot of parents don't even they don't know what's going on. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I know I know when my children are smaller, not to, we didn't play that music. We didn't it, it just went in in the house. But other parents they don't they don't contextualize the music for the children. If they let them listen to it, they say, "Let me that's that that that's kind of real for them, but it's sort of fantasy too. Don't take it too literally." I told her that. She asked me, "So why do they call? Well, why do they say these things about us I said because they don't care about you and the, by they I mean the big corporations don't care about you and those who claim to be uh, knowledge based hip hop artists once they get once they reach a certain level they reach that level because they've supplied what the mass distributors want to sell not what is good for the listeners, not what is good for the culture, and not what is good for humanity, period. Well, why come more parents it's disrespectful. just... Why don't parents just turn it off? I mean, like, you know, I know I'm, I'm square, so it's easy for me to turn it off. But just don't turn on WGCI and Power 92 I'm or whatever. I'm talking about radio stations. Oh, wait, I, I'm old school. I'm old school because we know radio, everything's on these iPads, iTunes. Everybody got their whole music on... Uh, I used to have, like, a stack of albums and 45s mm -hmm. back in the day, but now it was on your phone. I, I get that. Don't play that stuff. Don't listen to it. Stop it. Walk away from it. That's what I told her to do. I mean, but parents, why don't parents do that? Parents are... Are we that stupid? <laughs> I don't want to talk about my... I want to, I want to denigrate the parents. <laughs> my my co-parents or peer parents, I don't want to talk about them like that because June is a teenager and she needs some peers. And when she was in school, she found one or two peer families that were wholesome <laughs> wholesome is a good word it's neutral wholesome yeah and were concerned about the right kinds of things for themselves as a family and not concerned about certain clothes or certain items to hold and have so even June brought this stuff up too so parents can listen to their children really listen not just talk about what they think the kids ought to do because kids watch and do what you do more than they listen and do what you say. Yeah, when, when Pharrell had his big hit record, I, I was hoping that other p parents and community groups and activists would tell the other artists, let's do some more songs like these songs that just you're just singing about things instead of denigrating women or I, I'm the man, I did all of this. I mean, that's for grown folks' music, you know. Grown folks music, okay, if you're 30, 40 years old, you can handle that mess, but not 10 and 15 mm -hmm. and 5, come on. A big part of it is the work schedule. If you working and getting back and forth between taking children to school, taking them to some kind of after school program or before school program, and working yourself, that's 18 hours a day. But the parents, and the got, parents they, they, got, they got to demand that the artist put some wholesome music out. What, how can the parents be heard if right. they don't have the time to right. actually... It's about not having the time. And that's not an excuse. That's real life. I even watched um, 
a documentary yesterday was called uh, Happy. Mm. And there's a discussion about how people in parts of the world, they were in like 15 countries. And when they were in Japan, they have a word for overwork. Mm -hmm. They call it uh, Kamasi. Well, I might not be saying it wrong, but it starts with a K. And they're literally working themselves to death. Mm -hmm. And that's the level the United States is on, too. That, we're talking about industrialized countries. Oh, we know. In the United States, we have a fewer, fewer vacations, you know, vacation days. And, and any matters. other industrial Oh, yeah, we're just working. That matters. Pay I mean, even neuroscience knows that that part of the brain, once it's not renewed or completed, if you don't use it, you lose it. And whatever synaptic nerves that have to happen when you are experiencing happiness internally, intrinsically, not externally from somebody saying something about you, but feeling actually happy is what can prevent Alzheimer's. Yeah. Mm. And obviously keep parents included with their children. So finding a way to be happy and stay included with the community, there was three areas of intrinsic happiness or sources that these uh, neuroscientists researched. It was something about relationships, uh, feeling good, physical activity, where you feel like you accomplished something just because you can, and I forget what the third one is, but it's something about a context or a community, feeling involved. Once you stay on that level, then you'll be able to recognize, oh, I'm a parent. I got this job for the next, well, right now I'm counting down to 12 years. Because then my daughter will be 25 and I, she will be an adult. Her brain would have finished doing what it's going to do. As yeah, those frontal lobes take a long time to develop, don't they? Right, right. So <laughs> it takes until about 25, not just yeah. the age of majority, 18. Yeah, yeah. So, That's why you can't run a car till you're 25. <laughs> that kind of stuff. That kind of they, stuff. They know, they know what time. They know what it is. Exactly. What, what, I mean, there's been enough about. research. But Dr. Fatima Muhammad, you know, you're, you're, you're a woman. Do you ladies, in the, and when y'all go to the get your hair did, hair done, did at the shop, and the brothers go get their hair uh, cut at the barbershop, do we talk about parenting? Because most of us are co-parenting our children. We know that. 70% of the children are out of wedlock. You know, most first marriages fail. So most of us are co-parenting our children. And we got our grandchildren, all this kind of... Uh, do we talk about the process of parenting amongst each other? Well, I don't go to a beauty shop. So I do have some peers that I've been able to keep up with since kindergarten. We are a unique group. We have kept in touch with each other since kindergarten. So we're talking 30, ooh, 40 years almost now. And we get together at least once a year because this is required. Now we just have fun because that's kind of required to release these endorphins. Or I think they use dopamine as a hormone that has to be released. And when that's maintained and regularly expressed or experienced, then you'll be more balanced yeah, you have in your, all the other areas. You have your out. group though, but the, the, the average sister and the average brother, do they really talk about parenting? Do we really talk about this, parenting and co-parenting? Well, I hear it on the bus sometimes. I talk about black folks. I know you're talking about black folks. That's yeah. what I'm about to say. I hear it on the bus sometimes. And I hear it sometimes when I, I'm waiting for a meeting or walking past something, but I don't hear actual discussion of parenting. I think a third Except of Except among yeah. maybe, I got one sibling who has very young children. She just called me and mm. asked me about coming to some event Sunday. So it's few and far between right now.